Welcome to Lake to Lake, a new show about Bellevue. I'm Officer Carla Iafrate with the Bellevue Police Department. This month we feature high school science students helping the environment, an important message about firework safety, a short preview of the new visitor center at the Bellevue Botanical Garden, and one of our artists participating in this year's Bellwether 2014 Sculpture Exhibition. But first, let's look at some stories in the news. The City Council continues to wrestle with how best to regulate the retail sale of recreational marijuana in Bellevue. In separate actions, they've held a public hearing on May 12th about tightening the city's existing interim ordinance to require that a retail outlet be no closer than a thousand feet from another such retail outlet. The Council also rejected a proposed ordinance to implement a moratorium on all marijuana uses in the city. In a 5-2 to two vote, several council members said they want to respect the will of the Bellevue voters, 58% of whom voted in favor of the Initiative 502, the 2012 statewide measure legalizing limited marijuana possession and use for people 21 and older. The council held a fourth study session last month on the city's shoreline master program update. It was the first of three in-depth reviews of the key issues identified by the city's planning commission. Topics included public access and accommodation of shoreline park development, establishment of the ordinary high water mark used to measure shoreline jurisdiction and setbacks, and regulation of residential shoreline development. Approximately 100 residents attended a recent council meeting to express concern about a new electrical transmission line proposed by Puget Sound Energy. PSE's Energize Eastside project would bring 18 miles of new higher capacity transmission lines to the east side. PSE officials say the project is needed to provide dependable power to serve our region's expected growth. Speakers from the neighborhoods where the proposed routes could be located raised several concerns, including visual impacts from the towers, PSE community engagement efforts, route selection process and analysis, the potential loss of trees, and possible health risks from electromagnetic fields. The council expressed that they are paying close attention to the ongoing community engagement effort led by PSE and said they will advocate for the community to ensure neighborhood and city interests are addressed. This is an issue that will continue to be monitored closely by the city staff and the council over the coming months and years. The city council received an update on May 19th from the city's fire chief and emergency manager regarding the city of Bellevue support of the March 22nd Oso landslide. Bellevue was one of over 100 regional and national organizations to assist with this deadly disaster that claimed 41 lives. Several Bellevue employees provided search and rescue, emergency operations, and communication support. An interview with some of the staff involved in the support effort is currently airing on Bellevue Television and can be seen online at www.bellevuewa.gov. Teens from Bellevue High School have been helping recently at a Bellevue Park. See how students from the Advanced Placement Environmental Science class at Bellevue High are putting their knowledge to work. Welcome to Killarney Glen. My name is Andy Hyder. I work for the Bellevue Parks and this is one of my sites that I manage. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for coming out today and helping out with this project that we got going on, the invasive removal. Um, and just want to let you know how much that I appreciate it, as well as the department and the city um, for all the work that you've done. We need these green spaces more than ever. Um, and we're going to do whatever it takes to protect those and to keep them healthy. I think, especially if you're teaching environmental science, it's really important to get out. And I think it's also really important for students to see that they have a, a set, they have a community, that there does come a responsibility or a sense of stewardship um, for your city, especially the green spaces. And so twice a year I try to get the students out to do some kind of restoration and they like that the most. Maybe it's just getting out of the classroom, but I think also they do feel as if they made a difference. It's nice to learn about the invasive species and about the actual environment more in an outdoor setting than in a classroom all the time. It's nice being able to actually use what we learn in the classroom out here because we learn about invasive species and how they can damage the forest and where they are. So um, coming out here and actually doing something about it is really nice. 
We will have three classes here today and three classes tomorrow. We will we'll average probably 25 students a class. So what is that? 150 students, 150 man hours. The people that I work with in the park system have been really happy to have our assistance and understanding that we're only going to be here for an hour, which to me seems like a short amount of time, but to them it's several hundred man hours. You know, it's, it adds up. So I hope that they do have a sense of ownership and they have a sense of pride of what they did for their city, and I hope that it does start kind of that um, habit, if you will, of giving back to your community. And I do see a lot of that in my students. They do realize that they have a really wonderful city to live in and they've had some great opportunities and so they want to give back. It's good to get it done, helping out the community. Feels like your work has a purpose. When we first came out here earlier in the uh, fall, you know, we started off with just seeing a couple plants. And it just after that hour, by the end, we had a heap of, I would have never thought we could get that much out of the forest. You know how we only put an hour of time in and how much we can get out. Imagine if, you know, everyone would put in an hour. This month marks the end of the school year and with the 4th of July just around the corner, Lieutenant Richard Burke of the Bellevue Fire Department and I want to share some important safety tips for you and your family. We'd like to talk to you today about the upcoming 4th of July celebration and some ideas to keep you, family, and friends safe and how to be a good neighbor. Our goal is to make this a fun day for friends and family. We are fortunate to have several free public fireworks displays on the 4th in and around Bellevue. The largest of them, and the one that I'll be emceeing, is at the Bellevue Downtown Park. We recommend carpooling and arriving early. Other fireworks displays are planned around the Greater East Side. Every year we see injuries and house fires from illegal fireworks. Burns and injuries, especially to children, can be devastating. In addition, be mindful that pets can also be traumatized. Bellevue has a fireworks ordinance that prohibits the sale and use of any fireworks except for permitted displays issued to licensed pyrotechnicians. In recent years, complaints about the use of illegal fireworks have been on the rise. Bellevue Police and Fire Departments work within their neighborhoods in an effort to keep you and your families and neighbors safe. In the days and weeks leading up to the 4th of July, speak with your friends and your neighbors about the available shows in your area. These are great free alternatives to uncontrolled fireworks displays. They keep your family, friends, and pets safe while maintaining peace in your neighborhoods. Our basic message is to have everyone be safe and enjoy a family day while being a good neighbor. On behalf of the Bellevue Fire Department and the Bellevue Police Department, have a safe 4th of July celebration. For more information, check out our website at www.bellevuewa.gov. As it warms up outside, it's great to get around the city and take in the sights. On June 27th, the Bellwether 2014 Outdoor Sculpture Exhibition begins. The exhibition features sculpture and installations that create a path of art through downtown Bellevue. Here is a special preview highlighting one of the artists taking part in this year's unique exhibit. Bellwether 2014 Connect is a sculpture exhibition and an installation exhibition where we put artwork at Bellevue City Hall in the downtown park and on the street in places in between City Hall and the park. So one of the artists we're featuring this year is Miguel Edwards. Miguel's work has a lot of energy. It's on a, on a large scale that we like and we just see that it's unique. We really like the way that he's working with new materials, combining glass and metal, and we're looking forward to seeing what he does for this year. Every single one is such an adventure. I don't know what the piece is gonna look like until I've built it. It's a very intuitive process. It's really exciting to watch it unfold. I want to pursue public art because it's just another, another challenge to explore. It's a different set of constraints, but having the structure of working with city planners and things brings other challenges. But at the end of the day, I might have come up with something because of these constraints that I might not have otherwise. I wanted to make something that was visually a little more accessible but I wanted them to experience it on a personal level. I ran into a, an old friend, Ryan Blythe. 
on a whim, I called him while I was working on the Bellwether piece and said, hey, Ryan, let's do some glass on this piece. One, one of the things that's fun about working with glass and working with Ryan is by its very nature, there's a collaborative element. Ryan's been doing this for 20 years or something, and he can't do it by himself. I certainly can't do it by myself. And so there's this camaraderie and teamwork, as well as the intensity of the heat and the timing. It's, it's a fun learning curve and it's a fun collaboration. The process goes, once I've made the mold, then it, it sits there and we, we oil it with a, a mixture of uh, graphite and, and motor oil. And then Ryan ladles uh, out of the furnace and then there's that first snip where you gotta clean off all of the drips. That first little bit is really intense of the actual pour, but it's over so quickly and then, and then you get to sort of torch it down and cool it slowly. It's fun watching the optics change and the, the oil burn off and the glass does a neat thing where there's almost always bubbles that tend to slowly rise and you kind of torch them down and they raise the surface and pop. The, the welding and the grinding that I do is, you know, also very, very hot, but it's all in this one little spot, so to just have the glory holes and the furnace and the torches and everything is a lot of volume of heat, which is pretty intense. So much of my process for these pieces is, is very intuitive, and so I need to sort of be in touch with this, you can call it flow. And Sometimes it's there and it's easy and I, and I tap right in and other times I gotta kind of wade through it and poke around till I can, can find it. I don't, I don't know that I accomplish this, but I certainly strive to accomplish it, is, is to arrest people for a second and just pause and maybe even ask a question. And it, and it could be any question. I feel pretty lucky to a, have this be my job, and B, have these people in my life that support me in doing this, and it's, it's pretty awesome. Miguel is just one of the artists that we have in the show this year. We have 29 artists showing 32 artworks. You can come to our opening celebration on Friday, June 27th, right here at City Hall at 6 p.m., and you'll be able to see all of the work all summer long until October 12th. June marks the start of a busy event season, starting with the grand opening of the new Bellevue Botanical Garden Visitor Center. The 8,500 square foot visitor center includes an outdoor covered orientation space, gift shop, meeting space, and offices. There are also many site improvements, including enhanced gardens and new garden exhibits to enjoy. The new visitor center officially opens on June 14th. And now, here are a few details about this and other upcoming events. On Saturday, June 14th at 10 a.m., come to the grand opening of the new Bellevue Botanical Garden Visitor Center. Take part in the opening ceremony at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Then enjoy garden tours throughout the weekend with festivities both Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. For more information, call 425-452-2750. Also on June 14th from 8 a.m. to 12 noon, it's the Lake to Lake Bike Ride. This non-competitive ride features two routes and is for ages 8 and up. The cost is $15 to $20. For more information, email bikeride at bellevuewa.gov or call 425-452-4882. On Friday, June 27th, from 6 to 8 p.m., come to the installation celebration of the Bellwether 2014 Sculpture Exhibition at Bellevue City Hall. The art show will run from October 12th with displays from City Hall to Bellevue Downtown Park, including several points in between. Visit the Service First counter at Bellevue City Hall for the map and art catalog, and for more information, call 425-452-4105.
And June 28th and 29th, it's the Bellevue Strawberry Festival at Crossroads International Park. Join the Eastside Heritage Center and celebrate the region's agricultural history with shortcake eating contests, an auto show, and more. For additional information, call 425-452-1049 or visit www.bellevuestrawberryfestival.org. That's our show for the month of June. For more information about featured segments, visit us online at bellewwa.gov. I'm Officer Carla Iafrate. Thanks for watching this edition of Lake to Lake.